In northern Ethiopia, the climate is hot and dry. This is already one of the poorest countries in the world, and it's becoming increasingly hard for local farmers to grow their crops. Until a few years ago, they could count on occasional moderate rainfall. But they say now, with climate change, they no longer can. Either there's no rain at all, or it's torrential and leads to flash floods. Waldu Gebra Maskel is among those whose livelihood is at stake. His crops include fruit, millet, wheat and corn. The last three years we had serious problems. There was famine, no rain, only drought. That's why most of the farmers sold their land and moved to the city to find support. But Waldu Gebra Masko wants to stay. There's a reservoir close to his fields that should provide him with backup during the dry stretches. But the water doesn't actually reach his fields. A group of Germans and Israelis are helping local farmers irrigate their fields more efficiently. First of all, the conduits to the reservoir need to be repaired. That's where the German Agency for Technical Cooperation comes in. Large sections of the conduits are blocked and water has been seeping through. Gad El Harar works for Mashav, Israel's Center for International Cooperation. He's showing local farmers how to lay and attach pipes on their land. It's the first time that they are uh, meeting this kind of equipment. They only show it on the slides and then, uh, so this for us is the first time. So, but I believe that the same people, when they will, after this uh, installation, if we had to do it once again, it will go more faster. The Ethiopian government is supporting the project. It sends staff from the agriculture ministry to participate. The idea is that later they'll be able to share what they've learned with farmers in other regions. Finally, all the pipes are laid. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. We shall see what is going with the water. The system is still far from watertight. There are still a number of small leaks. The valuable resource is going to waste. We cannot work by like this. We are losing a lot of water. So we want to have a technology which is saving water and we are losing water. The fault lies with the pump, which gets the water from the conduits into the tanks. It's not working and needs to be replaced. The project isn't just about hands-on practice. Participants are also taught theory, and they even get some chemistry lessons. If they can analyze the properties of the soil and assess its salt and mineral content, they'll be able to identify how much water their land and crops require. As part of the project, the Agriculture Ministry staff will continue to help the farmers. Available water in the irrigated zone equal 200. Back in the fields, the irrigation system is ready to go. The hoses have holes in them to dispense water in calibrated amounts. This allows the soil and crops to get precisely the amount of water they need. Tomatoes and onions require more, other vegetables require less water. Here the water consumption is very low. When we plant on our own fields, we consume so much water. This is very different. I'm happy I've had this training. Gebra Maskel is keen to install the drip irrigation system. It would cost him the equivalent of about 250 euros. He hopes to raise enough for this investment from two or three harvests. With the new system, he expects to boost his harvests and therefore his sales. I'm very happy because now we'll be free of famine and drought. We won't have problems if the rain doesn't come. Even my friends from the village, who are also farmers, they came to me and said, this is a good chance for you. You have to show us in the future how it works.
the pilot project is set to run two or three more years. For these farmers and their families, a better irrigation system will mean a better life.